before we start the question and answer, I want to thank Marcella and Sean for arranging this, for inviting me to have my show here. And I uh, want to thank all of you for coming and seeing the show and attending this talk. I'm not a good public speaker, so. <laughs> If you have any questions, please. Um, uh, Luna was telling me earlier that she was very impressed with the students here because they were asking her such intelligent questions. So why don't you repeat some of them <laughs> and uh, you know, ask her. My current, is, current style is always my favorite. <laughs> I, I feel I'm going to uh, stay with this for a very, very long time because uh, the wealth of uh, every artist is looking for, it, in the old days we used to call it, every artist is looking for a subject that we can stay with for a very long time. And uh, many times things just exhaust them. But this is Possible wealth that I have that I feel that I can delve into um, continue for a very long time. I noticed your you noticed your technique on putting the circle on <coughs> your your canvas, whatever. Is that done with a stencil or did you do that by hand each time? Uh, it's done by hand. My husband is always trying to come up with ideas. Where I can do it quickly. <laughs> he takes little pieces of paper and makes them molds in it and wants me to paint through them or little stencils. Pakistan, you would probably, if you were to go in shops and streets, you will find most women are not covering their heads. So the impression, the uh, perception people have of Muslim women comes mainly from Saudi Arabia mm -hmm. and the Gulf countries where they do cover their heads. And even there, if you actually talk to the people, it is not so much uh, religious imposition as it is a more of a cultural just saying about the stippling in your pieces. It, it seems to me that your paintings to me really read strongly as devotional religious objects. And it seems to me that, that the act of putting the stipples down would have to be part of what makes them what they are. Is Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm so pleased that you noticed this because to me the whole, in the Islamic art, everything, like a lot of Christian art, all action and the image itself was supposed to be directed towards your faith. And uh, so it is in Islamic art. And the concentration with the geometric pattern, the processes that they used, whether it was uh, um, you know, metal 
work or whether it was mosaic. Uh, everything was supposed to be devotional. The very act of producing these were very functional items many times, but uh, uh, you were supposed, they were supposed to be devotional. That's what I tried to capture. And to me, it is not just the final outcome that is important in that way, but to me, even the process of creating this work when I'm creating it, it becomes almost meditative and very, well, I guess, really drawn into it. And it is an aspect of my work. I have a question. Actually, I have a short question. Um, the book holder, can you put the name for the book holder? Uh, they're called the hells in, in, in our language, in Urdu. Um, And, and specifically painting back? Um, I just, normally they were not painted. The shapes were exactly good, the way you see them. Okay. But most of them were either carved or they had very extensive inlay work um, with uh, many times shells or other materials. Or they were painted in places like Morocco. You would see them more painted, but in places like Turkey, they were more inlay. So depending on which region you came, they came from, they, but they were always covered very intricate work. That was my question. Was it okay to do that? My second question is kind of uh, off, but I have such a problem with symmetry, and that is so beautiful. It's like, do you ever have that issue with symmetry? Have the symmetry? Symmetry. Well, symmetry is a very big part of symmetry art because symmetry, um, godliness. And um, uh, the perfect beauty, mm -hmm. um, even from, from the classical times, I think even among the Greeks, it was uh, symmetry gives you what the, the definition of beauty many times came from symmetry. Yeah. And it was just a part of it, and I didn't carry that. I mean, it has to be part of my work. Sometimes I tend to think that I can loosen a little bit for instance, um, if there's one painting there which is a star, which is a yellow and brown mm -hmm. painting where I've broken things a little bit more. And uh, sometimes I think I would do that a little more in the future, but I do try to stay quite constrained in that symmetry. Well, I have to say that it's not just that I agree that that symmetry and that centeredness is a big part of it. But when drawing, I mean like the physical act of drawing this piece here. I, I do a lot of computer graphics for that. Okay. Yeah. Right. I do create a basic pencil drawing, and I have some photos that I refer to, and then I, of course I change things in my mind. Mm -hmm. But I go to Adobe Illustrator, and then create it as my canvas, which means for my canvas, 55 by 55. I create a drawing that is 55 by 55. And um, then I have these, I print out this huge sheet and many times trace it off on my canvas. And so it is a very practical way of transferring the image on. Mm -hmm. A question that I've heard lots of people asking within our groups of students and stuff like in classes, I think we're all wondering how long does it take you? <laughs> <laughs> And even though whenever my work 
changes has not it has not been a very um, conscious looking or searching. It is just a very intuitive kind of a process where I continue to work and then I find myself a little bored with the process and start saying it's not working anymore and then something else will uh, some new ideas come and which resonate a little more and I'll experiment with them and move on. So I'll stay with it as long as I'm excited by it and I enjoy doing it. Um, I don't know. I've seen most of your works are they either acrylic or oil. Is that Mostly acrylic. Acrylic. These okay. are acrylics. Uh, have, do you ever do print anymore, like printmaking? Not anymore. Not anymore. Um, I, with this work that I do, I mostly, one of the reasons I'm working in this medium is I come from Pakistan, I, my work travels back and forth a little bit, and I feel uh, this is uh, acrylic on wood, or acrylic on canvas actually is most forgiving, uh, because my older oil paintings that Marcella showed, which show white, uh, people who have them in their collection and a few museums, um, they have started cracking at, at times. So an artist should be mindful of the medium and these constraints when you are young or not. <laughs> and uh, I'm a little more conscious of it now. Do you do an underlaying of paint before or you just go in with the dots? I, many times I would do a big wash in the back and then transfer my drawing. And drawing is not always there on smaller pieces I don't need to draw. I can just go with a brush or with a little outline to give me some idea of the work, what I'm going to do. But I do generally do a wash in the back because uh, some of the works are dark in the back and some of the works have a kind of a glow in the back. I have to determine that before I start the piece and create a wash in the back. Um, the appropriate for that work. I was looking at one of your pieces. I think it was one of the doors. Mm -hmm. And you had a wash in the background. It was blue, but it faded in and out. And then after you, it appeared you'd already done the dotting, you came back and you put blue back in between the dots. Was that accent, or was that just trying to bring more of the background? More of the background. I know the one you're talking about. Uh, because I had put blue in the back, and you were talking about the red door. Yes. And uh, I, after I had done it, uh, and you know, you look at, I look at my work for several weeks and months after that, and then sometimes I would go back and work on it. And I just thought uh, that I needed to have a little more of the blue uh, peek out. You know, sometimes I get, is that cheating? Or <laughs> you started your art career really young. Very young. Yes. Do you have any advice or points of expertise to give the rest of us? Find a profession that is very close 